Hi, this is the chapter 6 overview video. We are going to look at oscillations and waves in this chapter. We have spent a fair amount of time developing fundamental concepts in mechanics, forces, energy, and momentum. And in this chapter, you are going to see how they apply to some interesting applications. We will have to define some new vocabulary to help us do that. You will have seen some of these words before. Cycle, period, frequency, and amplitude. You could probably guess what they mean. We are going to give them precise definitions in this chapter. The main focus of oscillation is in the discussion of what we call simple harmonic oscillator. Do you remember the springs from back in chapter 3 and 4? We looked at how the restoring force pulls the mass back to the equilibrium if you move it away from equilibrium. When you look at that mass over time, it goes into an oscillatory motion. At the end point, where the mass briefly comes to rest, there is a large force pulling it back. That's the restoring force. But at the equilibrium position, where the net force is zero, the mass is still moving. In fact, it's at the maximum speed. If you remember energy conservation in chapter 4, so it moves away from the equilibrium. The defining feature of simple harmonic oscillator is that its frequency of oscillation is given by a very simple formula involving only the spring constant, how strong the restoring force is, and mass, how much acceleration you get from the restoring force. This is sometimes called natural frequency, especially in the context of resonance that you should read about. There will be a separate video just on simple harmonic oscillators because they are that important. But let me just leave it here. Simple harmonic oscillation describes a wide range of phenomena, from this toy model of mesona spring to vibrations of atoms in molecules. What that means is the intuition you build here will be useful in many different areas of science and engineering. The second half of chapter 6 is on waves. This is the exciting topic in physics. In fact, it's so exciting, we are going to come back to this two more times in this semester. Once when we are talking about light, and one more time when we are doing quantum mechanics. There will be some new vocabulary we need to introduce about waves. Wave velocity, or speed and wavelength. In addition to frequency period amplitude that we have been talking about, sometimes we call waves oscillations in time and space because if oscillation describes something shaking just in one place, waves describe how this shaking propagates. We can talk about these waves in very general terms. That's why we are going to come back to it later with two more examples. One very general and very useful feature is this relationship between wave speed, wavelength, and frequency. It is a very simple relationship. In fact, you can almost guess it by considering the units. Wavelength is in meters. Frequency is in hertz, or 1 over second. So multiplying them, you get wave speed, meters per second. This is also a very useful relationship, as you will see. Um, the second very general feature I want to point out is what is called superposition, or sometimes when we want to sound fancy, we say superposition principle. Um, it deals with how two waves behave when they interact or overlap. Let me spoil it for you. They just add. They don't do anything else. But this simple addition leads to very interesting features, result of interference. And we will look at two examples of these features, uh, something called standing waves and bit. There will be separate videos to demonstrate these. 
In addition to talking about waves in generally applicable terms, we will use them later in units 3 and 4. We also introduce one concrete example of waves, sound. You will see how sound is a longitudinal wave, traveling compression and rarefaction waves. And we'll look at some properties of sound. If you know the speed of sound, you can estimate how far away thunderstorms are. Well, maybe that's not that useful in California. I had to trim out a lot of wave phenomena so that this chapter doesn't get too long. But no worries, we will come back to some of these later. Sonic booms, or shock waves in particular, we'll come back to them after we covered light waves, so that we can talk about two different kinds of shock waves together. This section actually gives a little bit of a spoiler. Let me know if there are any questions, and be sure to watch those three topic-specific videos for this chapter. Bye.